Welcome to the Varsity Beat, presented by the Varsity Collective. I'm your host, Sam Decker. The Varsity Collective is the NIL Collective led and backed by the University of Wisconsin alumni, former Badger student athletes like me, and Badger fans everywhere. TVC's mission is to support current Badger student athletes on the field, in the community, and in life. And if you want to get involved, then go to thevarsitycollective.com and learn more about how you can support Badger student athletes too. On the podcast today, I'm really excited to welcome on one of those student athletes, Badger basketball player number two, Jordan Davis. And then later in the show, we will be speaking with Canadian Olympic track and field athlete and UW alumni, Georgia Ellenwood. So make sure to stick around for that. But first, we're excited to welcome on current student athlete, Jordan Davis, to the podcast. Joining us is a fan favorite in Madison, Badger shooting guard, Jordan Davis. Jordan, thanks for joining us. We appreciate you having us. Coming off a big win against Ohio State, uh, getting the team back on track, uh, getting a big road win, that's huge for us. So, Jordan, appreciate you having you on. Uh, how are things going with you? Yeah, thanks for having me, Sam. I appreciate it. Uh, doing good. Uh, how do you, as a leader, um, now, you know, having a few years now in the rotation, guys definitely, you know, look to you and listen, listen to you uh, for the things you've been through. How do you guys keep that locker room intact during those tough times? I know you guys have been banged up with injuries and, um, you know, it's winter. Guys aren't always feeling healthy all the time. Um, you know, how do you keep that locker room encouraged and rowing the boat in, you know, the right direction? Yeah, uh, communication is a big key. I know um, we were struggling here for the last couple games and guys uh, – got together as a team and we talked about what needs to improve on and we need to hold hold guys accountable and uh, just like play for one each play for one another because we're all we have at the end of the day yeah I mean I, I agree and I think um, you know that maturity process comes with time right and you know for you uh, coming in from lacrosse you know being a Wisconsin guy as I am um, you know being you know you and your brother bit you know two big recruits that came together uh, to play for your home state school. What does that mean to you, and what was your journey to get to Madison? Was this um, a place that you always wanted to end up, or is it a place that, hey, this circumstance popped up, let's do this, and what does it mean to you to play in your home state? Yeah, actually, uh, growing up watching Wisconsin, like you, uh, Frank, and just all those guys, like Shoei, and uh, just like going to the Final Four back-to-back -back, uh, years, I mean, it was truly inspiring to me, and just to see like your home state, your home college uh, do that is truly incredible and I just know like if uh, I get an offer here this is definitely where the place I wanted to end up and it happened and I'm just truly thankful to be here well I mean obviously we're glad to have you I got a chance to spend some time with you uh this summer uh the way that you've added to your game and you know you know you've been you know up and down I think with your health a little bit as you know people don't always understand from from the outside looking in but uh one thing I'm impressed about you and this is you know, a testament to your character is how you're always ready to go no matter what your role is. I remember last year, um, you know, kind of had a lower role to start the year and then, you know, day by day, earn that trust from Coach Guard. Um, you know, what can you tell those guys that aren't always getting minutes or kind of wondering what their next uh, role is going to be? How can you keep those guys engaged? What, what lessons do you give those guys um, from what you've been through? Yeah, just uh, continue to stay locked in. You never know when your number is going to get called, so you just got to always – Stay locked in, know what's going on in the game, know what plays we have called, know what defensive sets we're in. And, yeah, just, like, have confidence in yourself so when you get in, like, you just don't have to second-guess yourself and just use your instincts and the rest will take care of itself. And I think last year that, that helped me a lot. And this year, like, it, it helps me a lot more. And that just helps your confidence grow as a basketball player. So when we go back to your journey to Madison, obviously your dad, Mark, 13-year uh, professional career, right? Both uh, abroad and in the NBA. Um, so basketball's in the house, you and your brother. Um, obviously, we're a package deal a little bit. Was that something that your family wanted to see uh, you guys go to the same place? Or was that something you and Johnny um, shook hands with, you know, on in middle school? Hey, wherever we go, we're getting an offer from the same spot. Um, how did that come to light? Or was there a chance um, meet, I go somewhere, Johnny goes somewhere? Um, you know, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, so growing up, me and him always wanted to go to the same college, but I think our recruiting kind of shifted uh, probably freshman year and sophomore year. I was getting recruited heavily for football, and he was getting recruited heavily for basketball. And I think uh, 
things kind of like shifted towards my junior year when I got an injury uh, on my collarbone and my parents kind of wanted us to play basketball together and so we just decided me and my brother actually talked about it and said well we should probably play basketball and end up at the same place together and Wisconsin was uh, fortunate enough to offer both of us and we just decided to jump on and, and commit to coach guard. I mean, we love stories like that, you know, keeping it within the family and then the Badger Nation family, you know, embracing you guys. But what has it been like now, uh, obviously with Johnny moving on, uh, you know, being a lottery pick in Washington, what has it been like now for the first time in a while to be just the only Davis on the team? You know, coming into a role this year as a starter, obviously, you know, you, you got banged up now working back in. Um, but what's it been like being Jordan Davis, the basketball player, just you now there? Uh, yeah, you know, uh, a lot of people say, uh, well, he's probably not going to mount up to his brother and like all that outside talk. And I just I just continue to stay locked in with all that outside noise and just play my game and playing here at Wisconsin. Like, honestly, that's all you could ask for, like playing in your home state, playing for an all time uh, college program. It's it's truly incredible. And I just I'm happy where I am and just got to build off that and continue to work hard. I would, you know, coming from experience, don't buy into that. You know, especially after, you know, being on the court with you this summer a little bit, like you have a lot of game that can speak for itself. Um, and, and you got to go out there, you know, with that confidence, knowing, you know, I've seen firsthand the work that you put in. Uh, and I think, you know, that shows when you play, you pride yourself on that. I think the biggest thing, one of the biggest, you know, moments when I watched you and I was so impressed, there's two. Uh, it was last year uh, during one of those Thanksgiving tournaments, you were hardly playing. And you came in, got a couple of old boards, got in the flow, got a flexion, hit a three. I think you had a five points in a quick, quick span. That says you know, a lot about the person you are. And then this year against Marquette, tough shooting night, weren't feeling good. You got a swing, swing and put that thing up, nothing but net, boom. You know, and that changed the game for the team. Obviously, Chuck, Chucky hit some big shots in that game. But, you know, to see you step into that shot, I think you were, you know, one for eight or something going into that shot and yep. just let it fly nothing but net on the road, that speaks to who you, who you are as a player and as a person. What can you say, you know, attribute it to, you know, the little details that you put into the game, the hard work, um, you know, you go back and you can lean on that. Um, so, so, so touch on how, how important it is uh, to put that extra time and that extra work to when it's not your night, uh, you can still come up big for the team. Yeah, one thing I try to stay stay true to myself is never be too high or too low. You know, I, I I could have a good game. You know, at Northwestern I had 15 points, and then the next game I had three. So I just try to like just continue to to work on my craft and get in the gym every day, like outside of practice. Like just whenever I can find free time just to get shots up and work on my overall game is just is like is I want it. Like I want to get better. I want to achieve like bigger things than I've already achieved here at Wisconsin, and just continue to like work hard and stay locked in that's awesome man and I think uh for us here at the varsity collective obviously I don't I, as you know we are nil based uh we like talking and hitting on a very important time in collegiate athletics where you guys deserve recognition you guys deserve spotlight you guys work hard um we've talked to a lot of great Wisconsin athletes but I think you were the first or one of the first uh, of all sports at Wisconsin uh, to sign an NIL, uh, NIL deal. And you were able to take advantage of this as you and Johnny had the PepsiCo deal. Um, and you've done a few things, a few more things here and there. As a student athlete, how do you feel about the opportunity to control your own brand? And two, is it a bit weird to drive down University Avenue and see your face on a billboard? What's that like? <laughs> yeah, it, uh, I never thought like, uh, if you would ask me like as a senior in high school, like, yeah, you're gonna be on a billboard one day. Uh, holding them on new body I, I never would have never would have thought but it's it's truly incredible to be in this position you know having nil deals and be one of the first on campus is it's truly remarkable i'm just thankful to be in this opportunity and it, it's just it's just uh i think a lot of athletes around this campus deserve deserve their billboards on a lot of things you know it, it's it's truly it's, it gives credit to all the hard work that athletes put in here in this uh on this campus I think it's also a cool thing that we have, one, a school that embraces it, and two, a community that embraces it. I mean, there's um, no fans more passionate than, I think, the entire state with all the sports. Um, what has that been, um, you know, what is that like suiting up 
uh, with the red and white, uh, good and bad. You know, if you have a good night, uh, the love you get, especially around the campus, have a, you know, team has a bad night, you see, uh, you know, some of the negatives of this era. You talked about being not being too high, too low. How do you deal with that personally uh, when you go to your apartment at night? Yeah, you know, um, fans around here are, I, I think, uh, one of the best fans in, in the college in college uh, uh, world, I think, in the nation. Uh, Wisconsin really is, uh, Wisconsin is truly uh, for their athletes, and I think that's that gives credit to us as, play, as players and as individuals, and you know you're in the right spot, but, you know, if you have a good game, you can't really be too high on yourself because it's just one game. You still have to go on to the next. And, you know, if you have a bad game, you can't really think about it too much. You just got to move on to the next and maybe get in the gym, work on ex- work on your craft a little bit more just so you can knock down those open shots or get in the weight room if you like you need to get stronger or something. So I think just staying locked in and stay true to yourself. Absolutely. Well, I think a couple things before we, before we wrap up here. I just want to hit on NIL one more time. Um, Badger athletes have done a tremendous amount of charitable work, reaching out to the Madison community. And in this NIL era, I think it's a huge benefit that you can now select causes or organizations that are really important to you personally and work toward raising awareness and funds to any of those areas. Um, Is there any specific uh, charity or cause that you personally or the team has embraced, or is it just kind of a well-rounded approach to, um, hey, we're the Badgers, we need to be a staple in our community? Yeah, I know uh, we do Badgers Give Back, so um, we did a video about that against uh, supporting our community and, you know, showing that we all care about everyone in the community. And one thing that me and my brother personally did was run a camp last summer, and we actually it was our second camp. We've ran it since 2020 or 2021, I believe. And just seeing, like, kids in our hometown just work on their game and look up to me and Johnny as – um, role models is, is truly remarkable and I'm just thankful to be in that position and honestly like I love seeing kids work hard and I love seeing them have that hunger and working on their game and just coming to the, coming to that camp and just giving their all it's truly incredible I mean that's you know that's what it's all about right using your platform uh, to change lives if you can impact just one kid's life you know uh, it, 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 it does a lot for you so um, you're going about it the right way um, Badger Nation, I know, is proud of you. Uh, we all are proud of you. And um, what is, as we wrap up here, what is what are Jordan Davis's goals for not only this year, but as you progress in your basketball life, your basketball career, and then the rest of your life? What are, what are, your, what, what are your next steps and what you're looking forward to um, in your goal-setting process? Yeah, uh, you know, I want to continue to finish out this season strong, and I want to I want to win a championship here. I, I don't think it's too late to say that, and I know we want to make a run in the tournament. And, you know, uh, just me personally, just continue to work on my overall game and maybe hopefully one day work, uh, play professionally. I know that's still a long, long ways down the road, but if I continue just to stay locked in and work on my overall game and stay true to myself and avoid all that outside noise, I, I know I can make it. Well, you're, you know, a fantastic, fantastic guy to watch, a great ambassador for the university and uh, for the Davis family name. So you should, you know, hang your hat on that. And, um, you know, we love we love watching you guys. Best of luck moving forward. Um, you know, we'll be cheering from you, for you from afar, as I hope you know. And uh, Badger Nation and the Varsity Collective has you and your teammates backs. And uh, we appreciate what you're doing every day for the, for the school and for the community, Jordan. Yeah, thank you, Sam. I appreciate you for having me. Yeah. Yep, have a good one. Thank you again, Jordan, for your time. But now it's time for the name, image, likeness roundup of some of the latest initiatives that student athletes around the country have accomplished. And these are the stories we love to get to. And don't forget that if you want to find what you can do to support Badger student athletes during this time, you can do it by visiting thevarsitycollective.com. Again, that's thevarsitycollective.com. So first up with this NIL roundup, we have Badger linebacker Jordan Turner, who has used his NIL benefit uh, in a great way. He has been benefiting the Road Home, Dane County, which fights homelessness in the Madison area. This year, he helped raise money to fill backpacks for 200 kids uh, before the school year. So that is awesome. Um, Good on you, uh, Jordan, for getting out there, 
making a difference in the community, but that's not all he did. He didn't just impact young people's lives uh, with the backpacks. He also worked with Keller Williams, a real estate agency, to benefit the same organization, Road Home, during the season. Uh, Keller Williams donated $25 to the organization for each tackle Jordan had this season. Um, you know, that's what it's all about. What a great way to give back. And I think one of the things that we worried about with NIL, or a lot of people worried about, was how were these student athletes going to use whatever money they make. Um, sure, some of it goes into their pockets, which is great. But also, guys like Jordan Turner going out into the community, into the Madison community, a place we call home, a place that our heart still is in, to help people fighting homelessness, uh, to help families uh, that don't quite have the resources that a lot of other families do. So uh, that's what it's all about. The Varsity Collective loves seeing NIL being used in the correct way. And right there, that's exactly what we're talking about. So good on you again, Jordan. We're very proud of you. Thank you for doing that. Keller Williams also, thank you for doing that and helping families in the Madison area. Next up, on a lighter note, Tennessee Volunteer star QB Hendon Hooker, who a lot of people love, uh, many call him the best quarterback in college football. He did a different little partnership. He had one with French's Mustard. Everybody loves French's Mustard. Uh, this wasn't just a random occur occurrence, though. Last year, Tennessee fans threw things on the field when they played Ole Miss, a rivalry game, um, and that included a French's Mustard bottle. So as part of a sponsorship, French's created a custom pair of Nike Air Force Ones for, Hest for Hendon uh, with a mustard drip design and color scheme. I don't know if that, uh, I think Tennessee is still an Adidas school, but I, I'm sure with the NAL, I think you can work around a little bit. So uh, French is, you know, kind of getting into the spirit of college sports and knowing that fans uh, love getting into the game and uh, you can't have people throwing stuff onto the field, but hey, let's make light of it. Um, Hendon Hooker saw this as an opportunity and did a, did a great partnership. So uh, whenever you can take a serious moment and make it a lighthearted moment um, and get clicks, get eyes on something, you know, that's, I think, um, all part of it. I think Patrick Mahomes did something with ketchup. Uh, so, so Hendon, way to get that mustard money. We love that. Wear those, wear those drippy, mustard drippy Air Force Ones. Uh, again, using NIL in the right way. Um, creating laughs, creating memories, creating moments. Uh, that's what it's all about, and that's what we believe in here as uh, the Varsity Collective. Let me run that back, the last, last line. The last line. <sighs> um, so again, Hendon, uh, doing, doing things the right way, um, using NIL in a, in a lighthearted, fun way, uh, getting that mustard money, and wearing those Air Force Ones proudly. Just like at the Varsity Collective, uh, we're proud of our NIL student-athletes using it in the right way, whether it's in the community or making people laugh, turning serious moments into lighthearted moments. Now I'm excited to be speaking with our next guest, Olympic track and field athlete for the Canadian national team and UW alumni, Georgia Ellenwood. She broke records along the way in her career as a Badger, setting impressive scores, and she now has been chasing her dream and going for gold as a member of the Canadian national team, and most recently at the 2021 Tokyo Olympics. So she joins me now to share her story and talk about what it's like competing and some of the things that she can do along the way in terms of NIL and off the track stuff. Georgia, thanks for joining us and welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on. I'm excited to talk about some of the things that we're going to talk about. Coming as a former uh, badger athlete and we kind of crossed over a little bit at school um, what has it been like since leaving school I know um, recently you kind of went down with an injury uh, give us a quick update how you're feeling how you're doing and uh, when you're back out on the on the field mm -hmm. yeah I guess it's been a while I graduated in 2018 and I did five years at university so I really dragged dragged that out <laughs> a little bit <laughs> but um, yeah it's it's been different I was worried for a little bit. I don't know. It's I, I know it's a little different in basketball, but in track and field, you don't know if you're going to get signed. Like, it is a gamble. So I spent about eight months after university just trying to make things work. I went back to Wisconsin and trained with my old coach and all that stuff, just, you know, trying to live the dream. And then after, like, about six months, I was like, is it going to happen for me? Like, I won NCAAs, but nothing's happening. That's what, what's so crazy. And then I got lucky... 
or not maybe lucky, but fortunate enough to uh, talk to an agent here in Canada, signed with him, and then things started to happen. So I guess that was the first step. But no one really tells you that. I mean, I think it would have been nice to have a little bit of a guide through my last year of the NCAA, but I was in no man's land for a little while. Now I'm settled in. Um, I'm with Under Armour. I'm competing professionally, and I'm working my way to the next Olympics. And then, I mean, that's kind of a thing I think our listeners need to hear. And what we want to do here with the Varsity Beat is track and field is a sport that, you know, so many people do, but not as many people know the ins and outs of what goes into a track and field athlete and the business behind it, right? Like we were talking about off screen here, eight time Division One uh, All-American. You would think, you know, if I did that in basketball, that's a shoe in, you're getting drafted, you're going, um, it's, it's easy money right away, boom, boom, boom. But with track and field, it's a whole different story. So how mentally tough was that in that space, you know, as an athlete uh, being like, hey, I've competed at this such a high level. It's such a, um, you know, decorated career. Why is this not happening immediately? What was that like mentally uh, coming out of school? Yeah, it's definitely different. And I knew that like we don't sell the tickets to basketball sales. We don't sell the tickets to football sales. So I kind of knew um, that it was going to be a little tougher job uh, going professionally and earning um, at, at least being able to sustain things financially uh, for that. Like I didn't want to have to work and try to train as a full time heptathlete. Like I do seven different events. I don't I don't have a lot of time for that. So it would take away from a lot of uh, the skill that I had if I had to try to make that work. Um, so yeah, it, it, it was difficult. And they, I saw something, I think in my second to last year of college, and it said you have to place in the top three in the NCAA to get looked at by sponsors. And so I was like, okay, top three, like let's do it. And then I came top three indoor, absolutely nothing happened. I was like, okay, um, I guess I'm gonna have to try and win this thing. Um, and then even when I did, it was still a bit of a lull. So I think we really underestimate how difficult it is to get picked up and um, be able to sustain that lifestyle after, especially for track and field athletes. Uh, so I guess, what am I, three, four years into it now? And um, I can say, if you work hard enough, uh, you can, but a lot of it is outside of the track stuff. If you want to make sure that you're able to um, support yourself on the track and travel and go to the qualifying meets, you're going to have to do a little bit of side hustle, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I think that's something that you are you know, advanced at, right? If you follow your socials, I think that's something you got on early, um, you know, with the Under Armour stuff, you do a little bit of streaming. Um, but before we get into all that, you mentioned the heptathlete, you mentioned uh, the work you put in. If anyone follows your stuff, you know, they see how hard you do work. How do you go from, hey, I like check and field. Oh, this is a cool thing. I like to run to, hey, I want to do like every event. Throw me out there. I want to do it. How does that become a thing? Because I think it's one thing to specialize in one thing, but to be able to be at a professional level competing. I can't say that I was like, wow, I really want to do the heptathlon. Like, I don't think anyone <laughs> really says that. It's one of the hardest events in, in track and field, but I think it it's chosen for you really like you try all these different events you try some jumping events you try some running events try some throwing events and you're like wow I'm, I'm pretty even across the board how am I supposed to choose one of these and then you look into it a little bit more and you see that there's an event that includes every other event in track and field and you think you're maybe a little bit well-rounded and I don't know about you but I grew up like pretty athletic in a lot of different sports so nothing really stood out there either um, and so it's kind of just the way that my life was up until then. And then I saw that that event existed. And um, ever since, I think I, I've i stayed true to that. Like even when people are like, what's your best event? What's your worst event? I'm like, it changes every day. Like I'm truly uh, on the like, textbook heptathlete. And I think that's why we stuck with it. And I'm glad that event exists for my sake. <laughs> do you think do you think that helps you almost in a way? Yeah, it's definitely not a boring uh, discipline. And I think that's what I love so much about it. Like I go to practice every day with something to learn. And I always wonder what it would be like being a single eventer and if they exhaust a lot of the things that they learn or if there is still new things, because it is hard to cover seven events, even throughout my entire career, I'm still learning. And I think I have to accept one day that I will retire with still knowledge to be consumed in that event, uh, which I 
I really, really enjoy. I think it's always teaching me something about myself. It's always teaching me something about the sport. Um, and there's always something to look forward to at practice. Well, I mean, I mean, I think you have the, the right perspective going through it. And I know, um, you know, you have your ultimate goals in mind, you know, as a member of the Canadian national team, something that is obviously so dear to your heart, um, as anyone can, can tell. Uh, what does it mean to compete for your country? Does that give you an extra boost? Yeah, it's it's crazy because um, track and field is not very popular in Canada. It's not even popular in the U.S., to be honest, but it's not. It, there's really not a lot of opportunity here in Canada. So I'm really thankful for the NCAA and what it's done for me because I was uh, a big fish in a small pond going into the NCAA, and I was like, oh, we can ride this out. Like, let's see how what what there is here, like what kind of opportunities. And um, when I got into the NCAA, I was really hit with the reality of how good other athletes are from around the world. Even Europeans, they come to the NCAA to get better. Um, and so there was, I was never good enough almost. And I think that was the best thing for me at that time to keep building and keep knowing there's someone better and, and to keep pushing myself. And I think if I stayed in Canada throughout that duration of my life, I don't think I would have hit the goals that I had for myself. Like the NCAA is a, a, it's a tough system. It is like you're competing every week and looking back at it, it's crazy how my body was able to like withhold some of that stuff. But at the same time, like uh, I think it's a test of my character that I was able to come out of that system, a better athlete. And it either pushes you or it makes you realize you really don't like your sport. So <laughs> <laughs> I think it was good for me. And, um, I, now coming back to Canada, knowing what it takes to be that good. That's awesome. I mean, that's. A, I mean, I think you went to a great, you know, situation for that. And track and field, I would say, is a very global uh, sport. You know, amazing athletes from all over the world. Um, unlike some specialization sports, but track and field, you're meeting people of all walks of life, and that's awesome. But I think one thing that is unique about you is. You know, you could turn on a TV and see you in an Under Armour commercial or you can uh, see you promoting something on uh, your Twitter or Instagram or something. Um, and on, also you have other hobbies outside of that. You know, you are big, you know, nature person. You're out hiking. You're, you know, I saw during COVID you're kind of isolated for a little bit. Um, also, you get into streaming. So how do you get into these different um, avenues that you have found some success in that people want to see what you do and that you've been able to show your personality through things. I think we're really similar that way actually. And it's cool to see you doing some of the same stuff that, that I'm doing. I think it wasn't necessarily a financial decision right away, although it is paying off. I think, um, it was more, I was so worried that maybe not worried. I was just I was very in tune with knowing that there is a reality outside of track and field. And I was really interested in that um, while still staying very determined in my sport. So it's a hard balance to have. There's so many other things that I want to learn in my life. And this sport demands so much of my attention. And so when I can, I want to learn what else life has to offer when I have the time. Um, and so I think it's really important for all athletes to learn a little bit more about themselves and what other hobbies they have and how they can explore those. So then in a sport like ours, you have to retire quite early, like you're what in your 30s and you still have a whole life ahead of you. Um, and I'm excited for that time. And I think it allows me to put all of my energy into what I have left in my career so that after that's done, like there's so many different routes that I could go, so many different avenues that I could uh, take with my life. And I think I'm just like kind of setting the stepping stones for that now so that when that is done, um, I have those opportunities set in place for myself. Um, and I encourage all other athletes to try to do that. And I ask people the question, even a lot of my friends are in track, like what other interests do you have? Or like, what other passions do you have? Even though it is hard to explore them, I think it's really, really important uh, to, to set those things in your life so that when you get excited for something after it, because it's really hard. Like I've heard some people who have retired from the sport that are like going through a bit of a depression or like not knowing what direction to take with their life. And I like looking ahead to that, that um, period of my life and seeing what else there is. <laughs> it's, it's so true. I think you hit it on the head with like our identities get wrapped so much into the sport we play. Right. And like, there's a, there's a saying in basketball, it's like the ball is going to stop bouncing at some point. 
what are you going to do to set yourself up when that ball doesn't bounce back up? And getting ahead of that, and instead of when that chapter closes and you're like, oh no, now what? I mean, I think at age 18, 19, you're already setting that, uh, setting that stage. And I think that flows super nicely into what we're doing with the varsity beat, kind of hitting on the NIL side with student athletes. Do you look back as a, a what if on your time with what NIL could have been when you were there? Or do you look at it as, hey, it's cool that the people have it now. These students have it now. How can I show them, hey, this is a route that you can take. You can open yourself up to so many different people and opportunities. Even if you're in a sport that doesn't, like you say, sell the tickets, but people still get eyes on it. You can still find ways to get people interested into it. Is there any advice you would have for current student athletes now? I was thinking about it yesterday, wondering if even, because a lot of things are online now, a lot of deals and a lot of promotional stuff. And I wonder if it was even as big when we were in college. Like, was that online presence that important then? Um, I can't remember if it was. I know it is now, or maybe I'm just using it more now. Um, I think I would have maybe focused a bit more of my attention to the online space and maybe social media, maybe thinking twice about what I posted a couple of times or mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. Um, and knowing that there is opportunity out there. It was just so written off for us that I don't think I even thought about what it could have been. But now I am curious to, to see if there was, I think what, what would have helped is maybe I could have set the um, foundation for what is after. And I think maybe there wouldn't have been that eight months of kind of waiting around to see what would happen because you're in this system that doesn't allow you to do a lot of promotional stuff, a lot of any brand deals or anything outside of your university. And so when you're cut off from that, it's not like you get instantly picked up. It's not like someone's waiting there with a clipboard being like sign with us or anything like that. Like you have to put in the work after that and that takes time. And so I think that's where it would have benefited me. And I think that's where I could have like, you know, in those like two days we had off a week, I could have uh, put in the time to be like, oh, what's going to happen after college? And you're kind of just released from the system without any guidance. And I was lost for a bit. Um, maybe it's different for other sports, but that's how I would have used it, I think. And it would, I think it helps other athletes now. So I'm very thankful that they get those opportunities because I, I wish I could have provided that guidance for people. For sure. And I think we're, our situation was different is the infrastructure for it because now it's a, it's in the front of everyone's minds with us. It was like, Oh, there's no way I can you know make that work. I just have to be an athlete. Oh, but you know, I'm big on vine or I'm, you know, <laughs> doing funny things on Twitter, whatever, but nothing could come of it. Now with these, there's NIL departments at schools for these kids, but in terms of impact, looking back on your time at Wisconsin, um, what to this day do you look back on fondly from whether it's Madison or whether it's a friend group or track and field? Um, is there, is there anything that you are, you know, you can go to bed every night thinking, you know, I made the right choice going to Madison. Wisconsin was great for me in what way? I think I knew right from the visit that I wanted to go to Wisconsin on my official recruiting visit. I was set to go to Oregon. I was like, I'm going to track town USA, but Wisconsin stole my heart and I was like we need. I need that that's a, that's a clip right there <laughs> Wisconsin stole my heart I went to probably a sports game I hung out with some of the track people um and I was just like the personality of the school and academically it really that mattered to me like I didn't know there was such a fluctuation in some of the D1 schools in the NCAA and I really liked that there was a balance um Maybe not the cold or like no mountains or anything like that. You know, I should have looked into that a little bit more. But <laughs> other, than, other than that, uh, it was a perfect choice for me. I obviously did struggle, uh, especially for, coming from Canada. And we um, it was a bit of a culture shock, some of the things. I don't know anything about American football. Got it thrown into that, but I loved it. Um, and I, I guess like all the other social distractions, things like that, were a, a little bit tough to navigate. Um, and... I see so many other athletes. I, I often think about, you know, could my experience have been better 
somewhere else. And I really don't think so because there's, you're going to have personal struggles in any journey that you take. Let me self-reflect. Let me see what I'm, I need to do better in the opportunity that I have in the situation that I'm given. And so at Wisconsin, there was a couple of years where I was like, wow, I guess I'm just like this good, no, nothing else. Like, I guess I, I can't develop anymore. Um, but then, you know, I went through some things. I talked to my coach, I got closer with my teammates and I was like, all right, let's make the best of this opportunity. Like, this is the school I chose. This is the school that I uh, resonated with the most that I thought could give me uh, the best opportunity for growth. And let me use that because I decided that. Like no one else can decide that for me. And so I I hunkered down. I focused on my academics. I went to practice on time. I didn't did all my work. I focused on my reps um, and things happened. So I, I really believe that it's your choice if you want to make a certain setting or atmosphere work for you. Um, and Wisconsin had all of the resources there. I just had to use them. Uh, and so I'm, I'm really glad with my choice. I'm really glad that the school pushed me into me being the best version of myself, really. I honestly think um, every sport and every coach at Wisconsin is going to send that out to their you know, <laughs> recruits saying, you know, this, you know, look at what we have. The, 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 the infrastructure is there. It's up to you to use it. And that's so true. Uh, last couple of things before we do wrap. Um, like you were talking about, it was for you to use it. It was, it was there for you. I just had to keep working through. Um, you didn't want to flatline in your growth. You end up breaking the school record um, in, both the heptath in both the heptathlon and the pentathlon. Going back to those moments, what did it feel like to realize, oh my gosh, I had just broken a school record in points on these amazing events at this huge school in the NCAA in the moment, do you feel euphoric or is it now reflecting on it? You're like, wow, that was really cool. Yeah, it's. I think what's crazy is that the, part of the reason why I went to Wisconsin is because I looked at their stats and they were one, two, three in the Big Ten. And I was like, wow, like they are amazing. I really want to go there. And to know that that might be what people look at me like now like when they're getting recruited like oh Georgia went here like she developed really well in the heptathlon like maybe that's a good sign for me um, I think it's a really good recruiting point and it also shows that we can develop multi-event athletes really well and that does have to do with the coaching and the system and things like that um, but yeah I think uh, I, I remember being after that I won the NCAAs and my coach I don't think had gone through a situation like that before and beforehand we were both kind of freaking out like it's so funny to have a relationship like that with your coach and so we were just kind of like dealing with the situation that's a first for both of us and it was so cool and and the impact that it had on the school um and for the athletes that are coming up I see some of the girls that my last year in 2019 that I was training with and how hard they're training now and how they've developed through those five years and they're they're on their way to becoming you know, number one in the, in the Big Ten, too. So it's a slow system. Like, it takes almost five years to be that good. But if you, like, really stay dedicated to it and trust your coaches, like, it can happen. And I think I'm a product of that. And so hopefully I can be an example for other people coming through there that if you are patient enough and you work hard and you show up and you trust your training and your coaches, it can happen. <laughs> I mean, I mean, what a better way to say it than that. I mean, um you know, those are moments that will last with you for a lifetime. And last thing I want to ask you, uh, for those who don't know, you know, Georgia ruptured her Achilles, um, what, probably 18 months ago now? Oh, it's been only 11. It's 11 not months? Been a year. I, I thought, it, it, I feel like in the last two years, time doesn't really like, since COVID, like what is time, yeah. right? <laughs> um, and I'm sure, and I think this would be a good thing to wrap on with you you talked about, you know, the mental aspect, uh, fighting through things to get to where you need to be. That's a whole new challenge for you, right? Um, dealing with an injury that takes you away from the thing you love to do the most in life. Um, as you're recovering, as you're going through the rehab process, as you're getting up every day to build, you know, your body back up to the level it needs to be at to compete as a member of the Canadian national team, as a professional, what is next for Georgia Ellenwood and where do you see yourself? Where are your goals? What are your eyes set on every morning? Firstly, I want to just say, like, I think 
for me, the NCAA system was so useful for things like this. Um, yeah, it's a tough system. I'm not sure if you agree with that, but some of the things that we went through as student athletes were, um, pretty ruthless, like going to classes and then having to train and then expecting to perform and then also having some sort of social life. Like it's, it's a tough system, but if you're able to really tackle that and come out on top, then you have acquired so many different tools for adversity, for coping, for mental strength, all of that stuff. Um, and so dealing with this injury, yeah, it's one of the biggest adversities that I've had or ever had to deal with, but I've been through a lot and I feel like uh, this is just another one of those things. And I had no doubt that I would uh, be able to handle this. It's an emotionally draining, but I think it's just something else to add to my arsenal that I can move forward with. And so the goals coming up are, I'm still on track. You know, I, I, yeah, I went through a little bit of a hiccup. I went through some obstacles, but I'm on the way up again. I'm back to almost full strength. Um, I think I have a lot of mental strength from the injury and I can bring that into this season as an advantage. Um, physically, I just need to get back up to par, but I still do have a few months. Um, and then next year, 2024 is the Olympic year. So that's the main goal. I know there's the worlds this year, but I want to look at the big picture. That's what means the most to me. Um, and then maybe, well, we'll see after that. Um, if I want to look at some different opportunities in my life, but right now, 2024 is the goal. I'm excited to work my way towards that. And I can finally see the light after this injury. It is possible to come back from a career ending injury, as people say. So, um, that with, especially with like modern medicine and, and the, uh, advances in surgeries now to fix injuries like this, like if, if I can do it, other people can do it. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's that's what it's all about. Um, we're hoping for the best for you. We're proud of you as Badger alum. You know, we want to see our school doing amazing, but I know our school and the people we were surrounded by and supported by still want to see us uh, doing well in our careers. Uh, so best of luck to you. We're hoping 2024 we watch you and killing it, doing every event known to man and um, <laughs> also off, off the track. Um, we appreciate the things that you do. Uh, setting an example for the young people coming through our school. And uh, we really thank you for coming on. Best of luck in your recovery, in training, and getting ready for the next step in your career. So, Georgia, thank you so much. Appreciate having you on. And uh, best of luck moving forward. Thank you, and go Badgers. <laughs> thank you for listening to the Varsity Beat, presented by the Varsity Collective. And thanks so much to our guests, Jordan and Georgia. I'm your host, Sam Decker. Stay tuned for the next episode, and in the meantime, learn how you can get involved with the Varsity Collective and support Badger student-athletes at thevarsitycollective.com. We'll see you next time.